Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in today. I'm Kimberly of Happy Gals Vintage, and today's video we're going to talk about how to properly care for your vintage and antique teacups. But before we start getting into that, I just want to mention our new affiliate sponsor here of our Happy Gals Vintage channel, and that is Tea Bloom. And they have some beautiful stuff. If you are into tea and drinking tea, or you have friends or family who are and you need gifts, um, you should definitely check out Tea Bloom. They have these really unique and beautiful blooming teas that when you put them in the water, they open up like a flower. So um, yeah, definitely check them out. There is a link in the description below this video, and if you click on that, it'll take you right into Tea Bloom. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get into talking about vintage and, and antique teacups. And how exactly are we supposed to take care of these things? Now the first thing that we usually want to do when we have a new vintage or antique teacup and we get it home is we want to clean it. But we have to be kind of careful about how we decide to do that. And a big no-no um, that we're going to start off with is you definitely do not want to ever put vintage or antique teacups into a dishwasher. Um, there's two reasons for this. First of all, the hot water, the changes in temperature, um, dishwashers get very, very hot, is not good for the finishes of vintage and antique teacups. And also the detergents that are used in a dishwasher are really, really harsh. And porcelain itself and fine bone china is um, very strong. But the finishes that are on the vintage and antique teacups, um, like the gold detailing and the hand painting, um, they are just are not as strong and they're not designed to stand up to such torture <laughs> as a dishwasher. So just definitely keep them out of the dishwasher. Now, even if you aren't washing them in the dishwasher, there are still some other things that you want to think about when you're washing them. First of all, you know, most people have a metal sink or they have a porcelain sink, a ceramic sink, and um, this can be dangerous for vintage and antique teacups. Um, what you want to do is, first of all, if you have like a plastic tub or a big plastic bowl, it's actually better to wash your teacups in that. So you can put that inside your sink and then fill it with nice warm water. Um, if you don't have that, another option is to take a nice soft towel, like a cotton towel, like a dishcloth, and line the bottom of your sink before you fill it with water. Um, that will just give a little bit of cushion um, so that if you accidentally drop or the teacups get moved around in there, they're not going to crack or chip um, when they're pushing against the bottom of your sink. Now once you have your sink or your dish tub all ready to go, then you want to use um, warm water, not too hot, not too cold, just, you know, tepid. <laughs> warm water, and the detergents you want to choose, or the dish soap you want to choose, you want to be careful of that too. You don't want anything with any lemon in it, and you don't want anything with any bleach in it, or anything that says, you know, super strong, really cuts grease, <laughs> you know, any of that kind of, I think they say like OxyClean, you know, that kind of stuff that you're usually, you usually use to like get, you know, bacon grease out of a pan or something. You don't want anything like that. It's going to be way too hard on the finishes of your teacup. Um, what you want to do is use the most mild detergent you can. And actually what we recommend at Happy Gals Vintage is um, baby shampoo. So um, that's just a nice, nice mild, mild detergent um, that will work great. Now once your sink is all ready and you want to start washing your teacups, um, you don't want to overload the sink, okay? Um, it's a good idea actually to just do one or two items at a time in the sink. Here at Happy Gals Vintage, myself, when I am preparing items to go into the shop, you know, I bring something new in from an antique store or a flea market or something like that, I always clean everything really well. and. Um, I only wash one thing at a time in the sink. I, no more than that. I don't even wash the teacup and the saucer at the same time. 
because I'm afraid that I'm going to bump up against each other or something's going to happen. So just one item at a time or a couple of items at a time, you can decide, you know, what you can handle. <laughs> but me, I'm always afraid I'm going to bump things against each other. Um, and the same thing with the sink. You know, most sinks have a metal faucet that's sticking out way over. And it's really easy when you're washing stuff and you're not paying attention and you pull the cup out or the saucer out to bang it against it by accident, just slip and either drop the teacup back into the sink or, you know, chip a little edge of the teacup on that hard metal faucet. Um, so push that out of the way before you even get going uh, so you don't have to worry about it. The other good thing about only washing one teacup at a time or a couple of teacups at a time is you don't want them sitting in the water for a long time. Really, all you want is for the teacup to get in there, get submerged. Um, you can take a nice, soft, cotton dish towel and gently clean it, you know, find the little spots along in the handle and stuff where the, you know, dust tends to collect. And gently clean that out. Um, you don't want to be scrubbing your teacups ever with any kind of, like, Brillo pad or, um, those plastic, you know, scrubber pads that you can buy, nothing like that. I don't even use brushes, you know. Um, people use scrub brushes and stuff like that. Oh my goodness, no. <laughs> don't do any of that. Um, just a nice, soft cotton cloth to clean them. Works great. And while we're on the subject of washing your teacups in the sink, um, another thing to keep in mind about a reason why you want to wash them in the sink and not in the dishwasher is you don't want to have cause, you don't want to cause any crazing, which is those tiny little, tiny little lines that can get into the finish. Um, they're cracks actually in the very, in the superficial top layer um, of your porcelain or your fine bone china. And this can happen on some teacups and especially in the really old antique teacups. Um, I know some finishes, especially there's some Japanese finishes that they intentionally um, put some crazing into it, but that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about when there is actual damage um, to the teacup that was never meant to be there. And um, the, the changes in temperature that happen in a dishwasher will only make that worse may even possibly create that in some teacups if you were to wash them numerous times in a dishwasher. Um, so that's another reason why uh, we want to avoid, avoid washing things um, like vintage and antique teacups in a dishwasher. And the thing about crazing is if you plan to use the teacups, um, that, that crazing can actually harbor some bacteria um, germs, right? So. It's just all around it's better to try to avoid crazing or if you have any crazing in teacups, um, even if they're just going to be on display, you don't want it to get worse. Um, it, just, it just doesn't help the look of the teacup or, or the, the quality of the teacup or its value. And while we're on the subject of washing teacups, um, another thing you might come into contact with or have to deal with um, when you get a vintage or an antique teacup is stains um, either on the saucer or down in the teacup, right, in the bottom. And this happens when people let coffee or tea just sit um, for too long in a vintage or antique teacup or just a teacup, right, even when it wasn't even vintage yet, right? Someone may have done this years ago <laughs> and let it sit there. So first of all, if you are someone who uses your vintage and antique teacups, um, or any teacups that you have in your collection on a regular basis if you use them. Um, don't let coffee or tea sit in the bottom, right? If you're done with your coffee or tea and there's still a little bit left and you don't want it, go and rinse it out right away. Don't let it sit because that can cause stains. And stains, depending on how long they've been there, can be a little bit of a challenge. Now most of them are going to come out pretty easily um, when you're washing them in your nice soapy water, um, just take your, your soft cotton cloth and just add a little bit of extra pressure, you know, just little circles, movement, get down in there um, and see if it'll just come out that way. I, I think probably 80% of them, those kind of stains, will come out with a little bit of, just a little bit of extra pressure and a little bit of persistence, okay? Um, however, if that, that doesn't work, 
You could also add just um, a couple of tablespoons of vinegar to the water um, when you're washing the teacups. That can help with releasing those stains from the porcelain. You can also use that same vinegar and a little bit of baking soda and in a little small bowl just make a little bit of a paste, right? So put a couple tablespoons of baking soda in there and then just gradually add a few drops at a time of the vinegar. Stir it up with a spoon um, until you get a nice sort of thick, not, not too thick paste, something that you can spread fairly easily. Um, and then you can take that and you can apply that to the stain um, in the cup and then just gently, gently massage that to try to uh, see if you can get that stain out with the paste that you made. Now, if it's a super stubborn stain <laughs> and you still can't get it out, even with that, um, oh my goodness, you're, you've got a stain. <laughs> um, you can actually let that paste that you made sit or on the stain. Um, for a few hours. I wouldn't really do it more than five hours or something um, and see if that will actually get rid of the stain. And I think after, after it sits for a while and then again um, you just go in there with a little bit of warm water and just gently you know take your rag and, and clean away at it um, and then rinse it out and at that point I think that is about the best you can do. <laughs> you know some people recommend you know using peroxide or bleach or you know other kinds of things to get stains off of vintage and antique teacups. Um, we don't recommend that at Happy Gals Vintage. It's just it's going to damage your finishes. It's going to damage the porcelain. Um, in my opinion, you're better off with a little light staining in a teacup than you are wrecking <laughs> the actual teacup itself. Now after you are done washing the teacups. You definitely want to rinse each one really, really well um, with warm water. You want to get all of that soap, detergent, any grime left, <laughs> just rinse that all away. Um, you don't want any of that staying on the teacup or sitting on the teacup because again, you could damage, damage your finishes. And then you can just put them on um, a drying rack or I just use a nice, another cotton dishcloth, you know, laid out on the counter. Um, back so they're not going to fall off, no one's going to bump into them, they're out of the way, and let them dry. Um, you can use another cotton cloth to just gently dry them off. Now even if you don't regularly use your vintage and antique teacup collection, if you don't drink out of them or anything and they're just up on display, um, you still want to keep them dusted off at least every six months or so. Um, go in there, dust them off lightly, um, it's a good idea, you know, again, just a cotton cloth and just dry them off or dust them off um, so you don't have any dust like collecting anywhere, collecting in the, on the hand painting or in the finishes um, or in the little grooves in the handle. Um, just get that off there and because it can actually damage the teacup over time. And then the other thing is that also, even if you don't use them, at least once a year you should wash them and that is because they actually the teacups actually need the humidity of the water it actually strengthens the porcelain and the fine bone china um, when they get washed so you don't want to be washing them all the time because obviously that could damage the teacup as well if you're just constantly <laughs> washing them but you don't want to just never wash them either um, because it will improve the quality of your teacup if you wash it, wash it at least once a year. Okay, so now that we've talked about cleaning the teacups, let's talk about um, good ways to display and store vintage and antique teacups. Um, first of all, um, it's nice to have a little display, maybe a little shelf, um, some some nice place to keep your teacups where they will be kind of up a little bit so everyone can see them and enjoy them. Um, I think it's much better to have teacups on display than packed away, um, but we're going to talk about packing them away too in a minute because I know that has to happen for some people and if your collection gets really big um, you may alternate like you know seasonally or something which teacups are on display and which ones are put away. So I understand that. Um, but in general, it's great if you can have your teacups out on display. And they make some really beautiful little um, cabinets and things, like 
well, this is a, just a, a nice um, open shelf, but they make um, the ones that have like doors, you know, like little glass doors. Those are really the best because you can still see the vintage antique teacups, but they are protected um, from dust and, and whatever's floating around in the air, <laughs> right? Pollution and stuff that could damage them. And if you live in a really dry climate um, or a climate where you have to run the air conditioner a lot, um, it's a good idea or well the air conditioner but also like just the heater <laughs> so like here in Vermont the heater's just running you know nine months out of the year <laughs> makes it really really dry inside the house um, it's a good thing to try to find a way to humidify your teacups a little bit um, it will help the strength of the porcelain and the longevity of the teacups and sometimes it can be something I mean you can have a humidifier um, which would be good for you and your teacups <laughs> but you can also just if you have one of those teacup cases that have like the glass doors um, you could just in a little inconspicuous spot back in the corner back where no one can really see it you can just keep a bowl um, with a little bit of warm water um, in there and um, just periodically fill that back up and that will actually help keep your your case um, humidified inside for your teacups. Now some no-nos for when you have your teacups on display. <laughs> um, you don't want to stack your teacups too much. Sometimes people will stack, you know, a couple on top of each other. I really wouldn't do more than two um, if you really, really want to be a stickler about being safe and, and keeping your teacups nice. Just one at a time. No stacking. <laughs> And the other thing is a lot of people will hang teacups by the handle so they will have either um, a teacup like display stand where the teacup hangs and the saucer is you know standing up behind it so that you can see both or they'll have um, little hooks where they'll hang the teacup by its handle and I know that looks so cute and if you want to do it you can do it um, but it's not really recommended because the handle of the teacup is the most delicate part of the teacup. And on some, some teacups, especially old antiques, it's really delicate. And so at that extra pressure um, of having the teacup hanging by the handle can actually damage it. In some cases, even crack it. You know, you might develop a hairline crack. Um, so it's best to just not display them that way. Always display the teacup upright just sitting on its saucer or upright with the saucer you know displayed behind it some way so that the saucer is being held up so it won't slide down and break <laughs> and if you have like a collection um, like a whole tea set right all the teacups are the same or something and you you want it on display but um, you have you kind of don't have room unless you stack teacups a little bit um, it's also recommended that you can use a little bit of um, tissue paper you know like you use for wrapping gifts it's a nice clean white tissue paper um, and cut little squares and put those in between so that the teacups are resting in the tissue paper rather than like right up against each other um, or they could like grind against each other grind against the finishes and that type of thing okay so I hope you are enjoying this video and learning a lot today if you are enjoying the video um, please like the, the video you know click the little like button really helps out our channel a lot and um, also if you like these kinds of videos and you want to learn more about vintage and antique teacups and other collectibles and art and all kinds of stuff that we talk about on the Happy Girls Vintage channel um, please consider subscribing um, we really appreciate it and we really appreciate you watching okay the last thing I want to talk about um, when we are talking about vintage and antique teacup <laughs> vintage and antique teacups is how do you store the things right you know you can't always have them out on display and so you know how can you put them away safely so that they don't get damaged the very first thing to remember is wherever you decide to keep your vintage and antique teacups stored it shouldn't be any place that you wouldn't want to be um, year-round also so what do I mean by that I mean, it can't be any place that's going to be too hot, too cold, <laughs> too dry, too humid, um, 
You don't want to put them out in a garage, right, that is, is not temperature controlled, right? Every, most places where we live ourselves, um, there's a fluctuation in temperature that's pretty within pretty narrow parameters. And that's the same thing you want with your teacups. You don't want them up in an attic that just bakes in the summer and gets up to 100 degrees. <laughs> you don't want them in a basement that isn't heated, you know, where they're going to be it's too cold or it's, you know, the air is bad and it's moldy, you know. Just think of your teacups as your friends or your family. Um, and if you wouldn't stick one of your friends or family in that place and expect them to stay there, don't put your teacups there either. <laughs> so generally, um, a good place might be just a closet in the main house, right? Um, but you decide. <laughs> you know your own place and um, you can think in your head, well, where's a good place that's, you know, that I have room, but that also will keep the teacups nice. Um, so find a spot like that. Um, generally, I think, you know, you don't want to store them up too high. What people do is they'll, they'll fill their bin and then they put them way up out of the way. But then there's that chance of when you've got this big heavy thing over your head that you're going to drop it. <laughs> um, first of all, you can injure yourself, which we don't want to do, but also, you know, then you drop it. Even if you get out of the way, you drop it, it hits the ground, and oh no, you know, it's a tragedy. So generally, I don't like to store anything that's heavy up too high. Um, so again, use your own best judgment on that one. Now the best thing I think for storing vintage and antique teacups is a those plastic bins. You know, they're about you can get them about way big. You don't want to get those too. Oops, you don't want to get too big, um, just because again, porcelain um, gets heavy when you start to add a, you know several pieces in there. It's heavy, so you don't want it heavy. Um, so you know a bin about this big I think is great, and then you want to line the bottom um, with cotton cloth again a towel maybe would be great dishcloths something um, and then do not wrap the teacups in newspaper so this is sort of a, a standard that people use um, for storing things and if you're just moving things just during the during a day like you're moving to a different house or something you want to wrap things in newspaper as long as you're going to unwrap them quickly it's okay but if you're going to put something away in storage don't use newspaper because um, the inks can damage the finishes in your, on your teacup, the hand painting, the gold detailing. Um, the ink can soak in um, and stain the teacup. Um, and it, honestly, it's just not that great of, um, of protection. There's just not very much cushion there. So it's not the best choice for storing your vintage and antique teacups. Some people will use packing peanuts. Again, those can actually, over time, um, depending on the conditions, they can melt a little bit and actually stick to your teacup. Um, so, no packing peanuts either. <laughs> um, really, the best thing is a bubble wrap, uh, like the little fine um, bubble wrap. And what I like to do is wrap um, the teacup in a tissue paper first, like a nice gift wrapping white tissue paper, nothing with the colors. Um, Again, we don't want to stain our teacup. So a nice white tissue paper and then the fine bubble wrap around that works great. And some people who really, really love their teacups don't even wrap them in bubble wrap. <laughs> they actually use um, little cotton cloths um, or, you know, the old fashioned cloth diapers. I actually used these um, on my daughter. <laughs> I didn't use pampers. She was so sensitive, her skin was so sensitive um, that the chemicals that are in regular diapers, you know, um, the different, I'm not going to say brands, but you know, <laughs> diapers that are out there, the disposable diapers, would actually make her react. Her skin would break out and she would get rashes and stuff from the diaper itself. Not, not the traditional diaper rash we're, we're talking about. So I would um, get just the cloth diapers and um, you know the old-fashioned where you pin them on and and, and that worked great um, I did a lot of washing diapers but those those are great um, for storing 
porcelain items um, because they're so soft and, and, and um, easy to you know manipulate around and <laughs> wrap things up. So if you really, really want to take good care of your teacups, you could try those. Now when you start putting your teacups into the bin, um, it, they're all wrapped, right? And um, some people will put like cardboard dividers that they cut you know, between them. Um, that's great if you have like a grid with cardboard where you can stick each one in or you create that somehow, that's awesome. But you may not need that if they're all, everything's really wrapped really well. Um, you know, don't stack saucers all together and then wrap them all together as one. Um, I, I mean, you, you always want to at least have um, some cushion between them, some tissue paper between them. Uh, and also, if you're going to do more than one layer inside the bin, um, you have it all wrapped up and in there, and then put a whole layer, like a, a piece of cardboard, inside before you do another layer. And um, I wouldn't really do more than a couple layers, and the only reason for me that I wouldn't do it is it just gets too heavy, right, to handle. Um, and you're adding stress for every layer that you add to the bottom layer, you're adding stress. So if there was any kind of like tiny little hairline, anything uh, in the, the cup, um, you're, just, you're just compacting that stress on it. Um, so it's not, it's not good for the cups. And then the great thing about those bins is once you have it all filled up, you've got a lid that fits securely on um, to keep dust out, um, to keep uh, you know, rodents out. Ooh, maybe if you, st you know, little rodents like to get into things and dig around. Um, <laughs> we, here in Vermont, we definitely, we, all winter long, they're trying to get in and, um, you know, we always have to, we do the live traps because I, I can't stand to think of little killing them. They're cute, but they're not cute when they're in your stuff. Um, so having a bin that is, you know, completely sealed up is is the best and plastic is better than cardboard for the same kind of reasons that cardboard you know can can get well first of all it has acids in it um, that leak into into things right so that's why you never like mount pictures like nice you know photographs or or nice artwork on cardboard because there's so much acid in cardboard in it and it kind of feeds out and gets absorbed into whatever it's next to. So try to avoid cardboard boxes and, and not you don't want cardboard right directly up against um, your teacups either. It's fine if everything's wrapped up and then you have a cardboard layer in between, you know, to keep um, when you're stacking them, to keep them safe. But that's about the only thing. <laughs> you don't want them in a cardboard box um, or touching cardboard. And the very last thing that um, I want to talk about is um, it's good to label the box. <laughs> I don't know about you, but you know, I store things away, I put them away, and then I can't even remember what, what I put away. So, um, you know, have a little label on there that, you know, says what it is. You know, it's, it's my um, Royal Albert teacup collection, <laughs> you know, or whatever whatever you've got in there, um, just so you know. And another thing you might do is um, have like, keep a little notebook. Like I have a little notebook here with my notes so I don't forget <laughs> all the things to tell you guys. Um, but if you have like a little notebook and you can, you know, put on the outside, you know, my teacup collection, um, and then in it, you know, you can have, you can label your bins, um, you know, bin A or bin B or however you want to label them, whatever you want to call them. And then in your notebook, you can, you know, have a list of just what's in each bin. And then you have an easy, quick reference. So say you have um, a collection of Christmas or holiday or winter teacups that you only get out at a certain time of year. Um, it's great because you can just go into your book and you can quickly see, oh, look, I'm, it's, those teacups I put in bin C, you know, last spring or whatever. <laughs> um, and you can be like, oh, and look, I, I can also see that in bin C is the, uh, the holiday 
you know, poinsettia teacup <laughs> that I want for, you know, my hutch right now for my Christmas display or whatever. So um, I always think, you know, the more organized you can be, the less stress you have down the road and a, a lot more fun you're going to have um, playing around with your teacups and displaying your teacups and um, just enjoying them in general. Okay, so that is all I really have to share with you right now. Um, and I, I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you did enjoy watching this video, please do, like I said before, click the like button and consider subscribing if you enjoyed, um, enjoyed learning more about how to take care of your vintage and antique teacups. And also, if you're interested in maybe purchasing some vintage and antique teacups you want to add to your collection, um, check out our Etsy shop, Happy Gals Vintage, and our other Etsy, Etsy shop, <laughs> Lake Fire Collection. And there are links in the description below this video that will take you right into all my Etsy shops. I have four Etsy shops, and they're all super fun with lots of cool stuff, um, stuff for you to enjoy or for gifts for other people. Um, so I really appreciate um, all my customers and I will I appreciate even if you just want to go in and just look around you're not looking to purchase right now it still can be a lot of fun and the same thing goes for our affiliate sponsor of this video which is Tea Bloom um, they also um, have a link in the description below this video I'm, I'm putting their link in there for you and you can click on that and go in and check out all of their beautiful tea related products um, and really high quality really nice stuff too so again thank you so much for tuning in and watching um, our newest happy girls vintage video and I hope you have a really awesome day